Now, you've got these two evil creatures here, the fox and the cat. Um, I think this one's based on one of the Marx brothers, actually, Harpo Marx, who I believe never said anything. But be that as it may, there are these ne'er-do-well characters, um, the fox in particular. Now, fox is a standard trickster animal, right? It's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a classic animal, maybe because it's, it's good at hiding and it's good at hunting. I don't know exactly why, but it's, it, and coyotes are like that too. They're classic trickster animals. Um, he's kind of like Wiley Coyote, in fact, you know, the, the, the Warner Brothers character who's genius at large, and of course, whose arrogance continually gets him walloped. And this character has a lot of features like that, but he, he's, he feigns being a, an English gentleman of like the 1890s and pretends to be educated and, and uh, he has a kind of high-blown way of talking, and he's a fraud through and through. And he's got, he's got this, you know, sidekick who is barely there at all. And he, he doesn't treat him that well, but, but he's got someone to lord it over. So that keeps his dominance hierarchy thing going well. And the fact that he's like a second-rate companion, well, he never really notices that. Although he'll treat him contemptuously whenever he gets a chance. So anyways, they're walking down the street, and... Uh, the uh, fox is bragging away about some crooked thing that he's done and how he pulled the wool over someone's eyes. And he confuses that with uh, wisdom and intelligence. And one of the things that you see, this is worth knowing too, because if you're preyed upon by a psychopath, which you will be to some degree at some point in your life, the psychopath who will be narcissistic will presume that you're stupid and, and, and that you deserve to be taken advantage of because you're naive and stupid. So it's actually a good thing that he's doing it. And uh, he, his proof for, and I'm saying he because there are more male psychopaths, um, the, uh, the proof that you're stupid naive is that he can take advantage of you. And so, like, if you were wiser, you'd, you'd be, you know, you'd, you'd know his tricks and then it wouldn't be morally necessary for him to show you just exactly who knows what about what. And so the psychopath will use his ability to, to fool you as proof of his own grandiose, grandiose omnipotence, omniscience, and narcissism. And the problem with that is that you, you can be fooled by a psychopath, and virtually anybody can. So that Robert Hare, for example, who studied psychopaths for a long time and interviewed a lot of them, like hundreds of them, and videotaped many of the interviews. He said when he was talking to the psychopath, he always believed what they were saying. And then he'd watch the video afterwards and see where the conversation went off the rails. But, you know, the, pro pro the proclivity to be polite in a conversation is very strong. And if you're polite, you don't object to the way that the person unfolds their strategy, you know. And psychopaths are pretty good at figuring out how to manipulate, obviously, how to manipulate people. And, the probability that you will be immune to that is extraordinarily low. Go watch Paul Bernardo being interviewed by policemen on, on YouTube. That's bloody, it, that's enlightening, man. Paul Bernardo, he's like the CEO of a meeting in that video, you know? He gives the cops hell, he gives the lawyers hell, he protests his innocence. He basically tells them that they're rude and untrustworthy because they don't trust him because he did a few little things 17 years ago. And he gets away with it a few little things, right? I mean, he killed a bunch of people, including the sister of his girlfriend at the time. And, you know, he was a repeat sexual offender and murderer. It's like, but he basically goes, well, you know, that's a long time ago. It's like, we're, we're past that, aren't we? I mean, I'm having a discussion with you. I'm trying to solve, help you solve some crimes, which, by the way, I committed, but we won't bring that up. You know, and you're, 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 you're accusing me of being a liar. Like, you're not playing fair. What, what's up with you? And then when they answer, he looks at his fingernails, which is like, that's a lovely little manipulative thing, because it basically means whatever happens to be under my fingernail at the moment is much higher priority than listening to your foolish story. And you watch, you'll see people do that to you. And then you get a little insight into what they're up to. He's very good at that. And so, or he looks outside, or he, or, or he just looks at his hands, or he looks out the window, immediately dismissive in his nonverbal behavior. It's brilliant. That the, the courts were forced to release that, by the way. But look it up, Paul Bernardo on YouTube. Wow, it's, it's just mind-boggling. It's he's so good at what he does, and he's good-looking, and he's charismatic, and you know he can really pull it off. And you can't tell what's happening with the cops and the lawyers whether they're just letting him play his routine to get some information from him, 
or whether he's actually setting them back on his heels, and I suspect it's a bit of both, but uh, it's a masterful performance. If you didn't know who he was, and you were watching it without the audio, you'd think he's the CEO of some company giving his employees hell for not being up to scratch. That's all his body language, his eye contact, everything just speaks that. It's amazing.